Okay, thanks folks for coming. Um, those that don't know me, John Simmons, NI0K. Um, been a ham since 1970. It's hard to believe. Uh, I was going to tell you a little bit of my ham history. I guess uh, it's not very exciting. I worked HF and VHF. Um, had a lot of fun. Worked radio teletype back in the day. A lot of CW. Uh, I've worked uh, worked with computers since 1979. Uh, so I've played around a lot with those. I've tried different operating systems. I've gotten experience with those. Uh, Computer interfacing to ham radio, I've done a lot of that. Um, and I've also worked with repeaters quite a lot. I did that professionally for about 26 years. Mm -hmm. So I feel somewhat qualified in, uh, in talking about our subject, which is repeater linking. And the reason that I suggested this uh, uh, little talk tonight is uh, we have been approached by the International Falls uh, Ham Radio Club to link their repeater to ours. And uh, club president's a fellow by the name of Marty, I can't remember his call sign right now. Uh, I've had email exchanges with him and he's been ill. So uh, it, uh, it would be uh, summertime before we would move ahead with any proposed linking project. Uh, their, their club wants to do it. So I want to put together this little presentation about uh, how you would link repeaters together. Why do you want to hook a re repeaters together and how do you hook repeaters together would be the two questions that I want to ask, answer tonight. Why link repeaters? Well, there can be several reasons. You would increase the coverage area, so you would have uh, two or more repeaters linked together that are in different geographical areas where the, the coverage areas don't overlap. You might do crossband, VHF to UHF, or UHF to VHF. Uh, you could do 10 meters in that. Um, you could also do cross mode. Uh, Traditionally, repeaters are analog, but there is also uh, digital modes, uh, such as, uh, they call it DMR. There's uh, Next Edge. Um, uh, help me out here. What's the, what's the Yesu one? Fusion. fusion. Thank you. So you might have a fusion repeater and uh, an analog traditional FM repeater that have the same, or approximately the same coverage area, and you can link them together. Um, the next question is, how do you, would you link the repeaters together? And there are three different ways. The first one is it could be directly wired together. So you might have two repeaters in the same tower shack. Uh, since there are wires between the, the two repeaters, they might not be in the same tower shack. And this was done uh, years ago. They would rent wires from the telephone company and link repeaters together that are not in the same building. They could be many miles apart. But nobody does that anymore because there are other ways to do it. Um, the second method to link repeaters together is via radio link. And that's how the three uh, Paul Bunyan Amateur Radio Club repeaters are linked together. Langby, Bemidji, and Kellier are linked together via radio links. Um, the third way is an interlink link. And this slide talks about um, the requirements of the different methods. Direct wiring, direct wiring requires a physical connection, meaning real wires. Radio link um, requires added equipment. Um, you need the radios. Uh, and you need antennas, but it has a limited range, obviously. Um, the, the two <coughs> repeater sites, or multiple repeater sites, have to be within range with, of each other 
And of course, that depends upon how high the antennas are and so forth. The third method is internet linking. Obviously, it requires an internet connection, and there's some added equipment there. I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, I want to talk about what connections do you need between the repeaters to link them together. You need an audio connection, and you need the push and talk connection. So on this slide, on the left side, you see repeater 1. On the right side is repeater 2. So in the, in the way this slide is presented, repeater 1 is receiving a signal, and that audio is connected between repeater 1 and repeater 2. And repeater 1, when it's receiving a signal, gives repeater 2 a push-to-talk signal that places it in transmit. So whatever is being received by repeater 1 is transmitted on repeater 2. Does that make sense to everybody? <coughs> okay. Now we have the opposite case. Repeater 2 is receiving a signal, and it's being sent out by a repeater 1. So it's just, just reversed. This would be the direct wiring block diagram. You see uh, on the bottom, repeater 1 audio goes to repeater 2. The push to talk from repeater 1 goes to repeater 2. And then up on the top, the push to talk from repeater 2 goes to repeater 1. And the audio from repeater 1 goes to, I mean, from repeater 2 goes to repeater 1. The push to talk signal, in either case, repeater 1 or repeater 2, is derived from a little light that comes on on your radio that said there's an active signal there. And that's all it is. So here's a, a little bit bigger block diagram that shows a radio link method of linking repeaters together. This is kind of a busy slide, but in the lower left-hand corner, let's start there. Uh, there's Dave with his handheld radio, his HT, and he's talking through repeater 1. And let's say that's in uh, Bemidji, 146.73 repeater. And the repeater 1, 146.73, is receiving his signal, and the audio from that and the... Uh, push to talk signal is going to the link radio, which in our case, as uh, Paul Bunyan Amateur Radio Club, that link radio is UHF. Uh, 440, what is it? 440. 425. 440. 4025? 444025. It's transmitting 444025, goes up the UHF antenna that's in the uh, right above this link radio here. And it's being received by the link radio out in Langby on the same frequency. And the audio coming out of the link radio, uh, if you look at the arrows on the bottom side of the, the bottom between the right two boxes, the audio and the push to talk are going into repeater 2, 147.27 is transmitting out there and I'm uh, out there by the repeater with my HT, and I'm hearing Dave. So that's how that works. There's a couple of hops there, and that's one of the reasons, or the main reason, why when you're talking on our repeater system, you want to push to talk and take a breath, because all those hops have to take place so that Langby hears it, and you have to take that breath before you start talking. Otherwise, the first part of your word is going to be cut off because it's got to make it all the way through all that. So that's, that's radio linking. Any questions on that? OK. You're either asleep or you guys are doing good. OK, here's the third method, internet linking. <clears throat> this looks basically the same. The only thing is, instead of a link radio, we have an internet adapter. We're just going to call it a magic box. 
internet adapter. And it goes through the cloud of the internet, goes to another internet adapter on the far side, and of course the internet is worldwide, so it could be anywhere in the world. The same signals are passed through audio and push to talk in both directions. That the handheld's down there on the bottom it says DTMF control. What that's for is if the repeater linking isn't constantly on, as R3 repeater club system is, you would use the DTMF control on your radio to activate the link. And that would be the type of system that the International Falls Group is talking about doing. Any questions on this part? The DTMF has dual tone, something dual? Yeah, dual tone, tone. multi-frequency, okay. touch tone. And that's what opens up your repeater or opens up your the link adapter? It, it, it activates the link. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? So how would that look on the keyboard? What would it have to do? Uh, it would depend upon the coding method, <laughs> but have you played with Echolink at all? Okay. Just like Echolink. You type in a code, star 47, I don't know what it might be. Pick it out, and then that would activate the link. Any other questions? Yes, Sean. Now, is this All Star or is this, this Echo is, Link or is this the Yesu one you mentioned? Uh, uh, we're just going to leave it generic at the moment. Okay. They would all work basically the same. And together? Um, you would use only one system. Okay. Sorry. There, there are a number of systems that are out there, and I'm going to address that. In a oh, second. sorry. That's okay. Any other questions? Okay, this magic internet adapter box. On the left there is dedicated hardware. Um, that particular box is made by a company on the west coast called Zetron. And it works very well. Uh, it's limited to only two ends. So linking two repeaters together. Um, it's about a thousand bucks. On the right side, it says computer hardware and so computer and software, hardware and software. That's about $250. And you can link any number of repeaters together that you want. Many, many, many of them. And at each end, then, you would need an, an internet adapter, just like we saw in an earlier slide. So on the right hand side, we're talking about computer and software at $250 approximately, that's per end, or per site. If you're going to link five repeaters together, you need five times $250. Okay? And, any questions about that? So if we get the link going to uh, the falls, and they want to link it to something else, they could? Yes. <laughs> Okay, and uh, here's a new acronym for you, radio over IP. Radio over IP, Internet Protocol is what the communications uh, protocol that's used on the Internet. And radio over IP is the process of sending and receiving radio transmissions using the Internet. Just a buzzword. So radio over IP, we saw this part, this type of slide before. The Internet adapter converts audio and push to talk to internet protocol. The internet protocol goes through the internet cloud and to the other end. And the internet adapter on that side does the conversion back to audio and push to talk. Real simple. It's a magic box. <coughs> you can do multiple repeaters. It just depends upon how many sites you want to do. Okay, radio over IP, commonly in the ham radio uh, world, is done with software either from allstarlink.org or hamvoip.org. I'll expand on that in a minute. And 
the software runs on the Raspberry Pi mini computer. How many people here have heard of the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> Just about everybody. Good. So well, if you haven't heard about it, it's a little circuit board about this big, just like shown in the picture. Um, millions and millions and millions of them have been sold. They're reliable, um, they're cheap, and if you decide to do this type of internet linking, you can buy two Raspberry Pis, have one of them hooked up at the tower site, and another one sitting there. So if it should fail, all you have to do is go to the tower site, swap a couple cables, and you're done. You put the backup in place. Software advantages over the dedicated hardware type, like I showed you from the Zetron. The software is free. You can't get any cheaper than free. It's a flexible configuration, meaning you can adapt it to any kind of a situation. It's easily updatable for new features and technology. If you decide you don't like the way the system is working, you want to change the codes, anything like that, you can do that. Uh, if somebody updates the, the software uh, and it's in constant development, um, you can do that. If somebody comes along with a new software, you can put that in there. So you're not locked into one particular uh, internet adapter. Another thing is, it's very popular in ham radio use. Yes, Tom? Have you played or looked at any of the Arduino ones? No, I have not. Because Arduino has some, uh, you know, it's different modules, but you can do the same thing. I, I've looked into them a little bit, but not a lot. I just wondered if you looked into those at all. No, no, I have not looked into the Arduino a lot solution. Do you know what software is running on that? Uh, that I don't know. Okay, I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Uh, I touched on most of this Raspberry Pi advantages. Uh, it's low cost, it's small, there are no moving parts like a traditional desktop or laptop with a hard drive, low power consumption, and they're easy to do battery backup on. So that if there's a power outage at the site, you can keep the thing running all the time. Okay, I talked about All-Star or Ham VOIP. Um, the difference between All-Star and Ham VOIP is uh, the basic software uh, is the asterisk telephone voice over IP software. Um, that was originally put in use in 1999. It's up to version 15 now. Um, it's used by companies all over the world, 180 different countries, to uh, do the business telephone systems in, for small, medium, and large companies. That's what Astra software does, and it runs on a, on a PC uh, because they need more power than a Raspberry Pi has. Um, a number of years ago, a fellow decided that this, this looked like really neat software, and he wrote a module. Oh, by the way, I should mention, all uh, Asterisk software is free. So this fellow, and I, I, I can't remember his name or call sign, but he wrote an add-on to Asterisk to, instead of make it work through phones, he made it work for radios. So he has a radio adapter to go on Astra's software. Now, Astra's software, if, if you were to study up on it, it's extremely, extremely able to do anything for telephones. It does voicemail. It does call forwarding. Any, anything you can think about with telephones, it does. So this was a natural to adapt to radio over IP. So that's what this fellow did. And he did a lot of work on it, and he was an older gentleman, and he became ill and passed away. Some other people took over the system, um, but there was a, a period there where basically nothing was happening. And another group of hams said, well, hey, we've got a group of guys here, and we know a lot about software, so we're going to take 
the all-star software and we're going to put it back into development, but we're going to do it our own way. And in uh, the software world, this is called a fork. You take uh, an original program and one group goes this way, another group goes that way, they fork, it's like a fork in a row, and they do their own thing. So the Ham VOIP is, is actively in development, All-Star is kind of stuck right now, although they're starting to get back together. You can do several different things with, I'm going to just call it All-Star because that's how it originally started, but you can do several different things with All-Star. Um, I'm talking about linking right now. You can use it also as a repeater controller. So you wouldn't need an RCOM or anything like that. You can use the Raspberry Pi with the software for a standalone re repeater. You can use it on multiple repeaters. There is a worldwide database of all-star linked repeaters, and it works like Echolink where you can connect to a remote node somewhere else in a different area, a different state, different country, all the way across the world. Or you can use what they call private nodes. So you're not registered to the all-star database. You're not connected to that in any way. You have your own private system and you keep your repeaters only linked to each other. So there's a public system and a private system. Any other questions so far? <coughs> so the question is, why would you not use this? It's based on extremely reliable software. It's used all over the world. It's a popular system. But why would you not? So I'm just going to sum up here. All Star with a Raspberry Pi uh, is the best alternative for linking. It's inexpensive. It's flexible. There are a large community of users because it's used all over the, uh, the world. Uh, I belong to some of the forums on that. And there are emails probably a dozen a day. The main developer on Ham VOIP uh, is available by email within a few hours if you have a question. He's really good about answering questions. It's well documented. He's got how-to instructions from beginning to doing advanced stuff. So there's, there's a lot of documentation out there. It isn't something that you have to fumble along with on yourself. You can uh, change the configuration of a site remotely. So Let's say, Bob, that you have uh, you've decided to go rogue, and you're going to play with the, with the system. You're going to type in all these codes all the time and monkey with it and make everybody's life miserable. Well, I can go in, not over the radio, but through the internet, and I can change all the codes and you're locked out. Hmm. So don't do that. <laughs> we can link to a repeater anywhere in the world, multiple repeaters. It's robust and reliable. It works with any repeater, any repeater contro controller, or any radio. You can hook it to anything. You're not limited. Questions? Yes, Dan. Uh, so you have the Raspberry Pi. Uh, physically, how does that hook up uh, to the radios, uh, for like the audio and the the push to talk, does that come off the header pins on the Raspberry Pi, or is there a little sister board that goes with it? Or the question, I'm going to repeat the question for the, for the microphone. Uh, how do you connect the Raspberry Pi to the repeater? Yep. You use a USB adapter, audio adapter, and um, then in the USB adapter, uh, you add a transistor for a key push to talk. So the audio to and from the repeater go through the USB sound adapter. Um, and you can buy those for like eight bucks or two bucks if you buy them in quantity. Otherwise, you can buy a factory made one specifically for two way radio use for about $50. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Dave. More general question. Um, I was cruising through Montana last summer. My brother lives in Kalispell. 
and some guys were talking on the Montana, on the Kalispell repeater, and I noticed they're all them full four call signs, so they were way down south. And I was going to drop in my call sign and add something, and I keyed up. Apparently I didn't make the repeater, but all I said was, Ah, oh, Montana, you're not quite making the repeater. What kind of system did I get into? No idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it's huge, there were four call signs, so that would be way down south. But he knew where it was. Uh, yeah, could be, it's hard to, hard to really speculate what, what you found there, David. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, folks, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.